Back to Nigel's head then. Obviously I've got all the kit there. I've just been cleaning up the surface on that and cleaning the surface on this as well, which still got some marks on it, but it's all very, very smooth indeed now, as you can probably see. That's what elbow grease does for you. I think that head is about ready to assemble now. I've spent ages cleaning with brake cleaner and bits of rags and screwdrivers and trying to get little bits of carbon deposits out of the cam carriers. So without a parts washer, that's as clean as it's going to get. And consider that had I have just changed the oil, all that stuff would have been in there as well anyway, but it still would have been better. I honestly believe that that head is good enough. You can see some slight black marks on there that would need a skim to come off but I can't feel any ridges besides those two tiny bits of pitting on the edge where it's not even relevant. So probably time to crack on. I'm really rather keen to get that cam carrier on the top of there now and get it stuck down and crack on with the job. But um, the chap next door he wants to come around and check I've done it all right. And uh, if I just put it all together, he'll probably be rather disappointed. You should have seen his face when I took the head off without telling him. Ages he's been saying to me, come on, let's get a head cracked off. I'll do a K series head. Yeah, he loves the old K series. And to be honest, I've met many a mechanic that say they really enjoy working on the K series. Good thing, eh? Just put the sealant on this. I'm about to stick it on there. It's time to put the cam wheels back on. My next job is to take off just a little bit of metal off of this dowel. Because as I'm not using a multi-layer gasket, I believe this could be a little bit too long. That's what I've been told. just one bolt missing because it fell out the bottom there and I'm not being able to find it. Having lost one of these before prompted me to keep a stash of them. That's ready to go on. What a rather exciting moment this is. Out it comes. High tensile bolts, head bolts, go through the middle there. Right, the bolts are placed in, but now I've got to move the cams around for ones like that and that to be able to sink down because part of the cam is in the way. A couple of years back, I bought one of these Aldi specials, a torque wrench. Now, I need these bolts to be done up to 20 newton meters. But this doesn't go as low as that. It goes down to about 70. So it'd be guesswork if I was to use it. And guesswork isn't really the way to do it, is it? Torque, 60 to 210 Newton meters. Uh, 60 is such a long way off 20. Uh, for something that's supposed to be done exactly right, I don't think it's worthwhile taking any kind of chances there. So uh, that was going to be my last job of the day but now it's going to be the first job of tomorrow. It's probably time to go home anyway. Going home. 
look at the colour of my head. I can't tell whether I've got a massive suntan suddenly or I've just got a very dirty face. There is every reason that Nigel will be once again in working calm. You know, before this time tomorrow. But all I've got to do is bolt down that head and put a few bits of things on put the cam belt back on. Time the engine as well of course. That's actually quite important. Otherwise it'll destroy itself before it even starts. And then uh, oil change and the coolant. Yep. Oh, and one other thing as well, which is, um, yeah, on the high pressure fuel line, there's a little rubber grommet that got split. And I need to replace it because at the moment, it just leaks fuel. That is a good idea. <laughs> Pride of Longbridge event thingy is tomorrow, so I still have some work to do. Ideally, once this is fixed, I would have preferred to have just driven it around locally for a week or so, just to make sure there are no hiccups, rather than just taking it straight off on a 201 mile drive. Time to crack on. Look, there's a digital torque wrench, which is much more accurate than the one I have. I really don't know how accurate you can be with a tool that starts at 60 newton meters when you need 20. Mm, probably not very at all, actually. So I've done them all up to 20 newton meters, and I've been advised to just wait 10 minutes and just recheck it because they can move a little bit. They want to be up to 20 newton meters and then 180 degrees twice. So um, obviously the degrees aren't about torque, they're just about another extra movement. So it's obviously important to get that part right. And then once the head is done up properly, I'm going to undo the bottom pulley. Now I didn't do that the other day because I thought I could I'll have it set so I don't really need to do it but it turns out the, uh, the the timing isn't quite what I was expecting. I've got to do that so I can have all of the pistons level set the time up from there otherwise I'm going to put it back together and something won't work and it won't be just my brain. I'm also grateful for some of the advice I've been given by some of my subscribers about uh, the method in which you put this back together. Unfortunately it's a bit too late because I'd already gone beyond that point before I've read it. What should I do for the next 10 minutes? Should I ramble endlessly about my experiences with Rover and why I got into them in the first place? No, I've already done that. Should I tidy up the shed? No, because I'll get distracted and before I know it, it'll be dinner time. Should I wander around the yard looking for the mysterious yard cats? Where are you, yard cat? I can see a squirrel. Should I tell you about the time that I raced the police from the traffic lights and got pulled over? Nah, I'll save that for when I start doing my driving yards. Well, it wasn't kidding there. It certainly did slacken off ever so slightly in the middle there. That was clearly one of the most exciting moments of the day, which is why I sped it up so much. I'm always doing that, aren't I? Imagine how long my videos would be if I didn't speed anything up. Imagine how many people would be watching it by the end. Probably even less than what do now. I shall repeat that process in five minutes. For the head, just leave the head to settle for a little bit and then another 180 degrees each in sequence. this but so I'm going to put a little bit of oil onto the top of the cylinder head because there's no oil there 
I'm just going to use a bit of cheap Tesco stuff because it's all going to get drained off soon anyway. While I had the opportunity there, I should have just put on a more attractive rocker cover because this one certainly is uh, just a bit on the grotty side. So now it is time to take this bottom pulley off with the borrowed big gun so it can be timed up properly. It is 12 o'clock now and I've only had one cup of tea and that means that's the first time I've been for a wee all day. Isn't that strange? And the thing is I've just been taking my time just trying to do oh shit going on the principle of do it once do the job once so check in and double check in everything before slinging everything back together and hopefully that will pay off okay so the now the bottom end is timed up to top dead center I've been told to take this back off because you can't tighten these wheels up properly but uh, actually I'm not really sure why so I'm going to put this in here. If I put this in here, then I'll be able to tighten up the the wheels. If I can get that in there, that is. <laughs> oh, well, I've got the difficult part done. The the belt, the cam belt, is now on. All of that's done. I've just got all the bits to stick back together. And there I was, just trying to get the alternator belt on. I thought, it's too baggy this. Yeah, what's going on? Yeah, and then I realised there's no alternator on it, is it? It's, it's on the custard missile. So the custard missile is going to have to give it back. I want your alternator back. Well, I want my alternator back now. Kev, come on. All the difficult parts are done. Easy parts now present me with a problem. The bracket to hold the alternator in place goes there and uh, it's broken there <laughs> and uh, that bit is spinning as well so I'm going to struggle to get this secure I think Sorry to have to do this. I'm going to have to cannibalise this car for a bit. It's a temporary measure. I do need this. Progress hasn't been that great really due to losing tools and uh, losing more tools and then putting an engine mount on slightly incorrectly which has taken me probably half an hour to then rectify that mistake, maybe even longer. But now, all I've got to do is put the wheel on, turn the key. Hmm? Well, it looks like my starter motor has decided to give up. Time is now half past six and it's not finished. Mainly because it won't run. It wouldn't run at all in fact. But there's a good reason for that. The timing was 180 degrees out, which is enough to make it not run at all. And it didn't. So we'll put that back on, airbox. I not have to have put the uh, new coolant in. Probably going to have to 
leave the oil change for another day now. Seven o'clock, it's all back together. But it's still smoking from the manifold. Do I want to risk driving this car tomorrow before I really am comfortable with my job on it? Not really, no. Obviously the car is put together. But I'm going to take it for a little test run. See what it's like. See if it's any better than it was before or any worse. I don't know yet, but I just feel instantly happy again being in this car. I've said it so many times before, and it still works. It still just makes me overly joyous and just, I don't know, it's just the happiest car in the world. Well, there is a burning smell again coming off the manifold. That's quite um, clear, so I'm not sure what that's about. There's someone behind pointing at my car. That's the idea. It is possibly going a bit better than it did do before, but I can't tell. It might just be psychological. Psychology kind of affects us like that. It feels like it's a bit more responsive. It feels like it is. I'm a bit distracted by all the loose things going on in here though. That's kind of annoying me a bit now, if I'm honest. I don't want stuff. Oh, bikes there. I thought I'd left the locking wheel nut on the wheel then just for a second, but I didn't. 